Once again, the USA becomes the setting for an historic pronouncement by Mr. Winston Churchill as Boston greets an illustrious guest of honor. A huge gathering at the Boston Garden was joined by a worldwide radio audience and Mr. Churchill's genial humor was reflected in his opening remarks. Ladies and gentlemen, I frankly confess that I feel somewhat overawed in addressing this vast scientific and learned audience on the subject which your panels are discussing. I have no technique and no university education, uh, and have just had to pick up a few things as I went along. <laughs> Wholehearted applause was given to the man whose warnings at Fulton, Missouri had been so amply justified and who now underlined the Soviet policy of today. We are now confronted with something quite as wicked, but in some ways more formidable than Hitler. Because Hitler had only the heron folk pride and anti-Semitic hatred to exploit. He had no fundamental theme, but these 13 men in the Kremlin have their hierarchy and a church of communist adepts whose missionaries are in every country at the fifth column, obscure people, about awaiting the day when they hope to be the absolute masters of their fellow countrymen and pay off old scores. I must not conceal from you tonight <clears throat> the truth as I see it. It is certain that Europe would have been communized like Czechoslovakia and London under bombardment some time ago, but for the deterrent of the atomic bomb in the hands of the United States. seek nothing from Russia but goodwill and fair play. If, however, there is to be a war of nerves, let us make sure that our nerves are strong. Let us then move forward together in discharge of our mission and our duty, fearing God and nothing else. 